recorded live at Jalopy Theater in Brooklyn. Messenger Theater Company presents The Defense. This is session one. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered it at the library. There was a reading, and the crowds were thick, and the lines were long, and this man behind me put his hand on me as he pushed ahead. Mm. Now, I don't usually say anything when stuff like that happens, but that day it was different. Maybe it was the way his hand felt, like creepy, <laughs> or maybe it was just the day I'd had, but I turned around and told him not to touch me. His face turned purple, and suddenly, from out of nowhere, he had a beer bottle, and he was waving it in my face. Hmm. People were staring, and he got angrier, with all those eyes on him, I guess. I tried to back away, but the place was too crowded to get far. I guess he felt cornered, too, because he broke the bottle on the table next to him and started coming toward me with it. Oh, no. I disappeared for a moment. It was like a gap in my memory, and the next thing I knew, he was gone. But everyone around me was staring at the floor where he'd been, and then looking back at me. So I looked down, and there he was. Still shouting, still swinging his bottle, but about ten inches tall. <gasps> no. I'd never seen anything like it. He was doll-sized, just about the size of a Barbie. Wow. I looked around, and a lot of people were staring at me with wonder and horror. What happened? Wow! <laughs> Did I do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I stood there stunned for a moment while the little man shouted at my feet, and then I just walked out. I walked for several blocks before I could catch up with my thoughts. The chill in the air had a bracing effect, and I started to consider all that had happened. The more I thought about it, the more it seemed like his transformation had somehow come from me. It was my doing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't repeat it or control it, at least not consciously. But I felt increasingly certain that if there were a witch, I was she. Welcome, witch! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, Lori, that is one of the more public discovery stories I've heard. Most of us don't have an audience for our first encounters with the defense. No? No, usually no. I didn't have any witnesses. Me neither. Well, people were around, but they all just thought the guy was having a heart attack, so my part wasn't really obvious, at least to me. Must have been difficult. First, to have so many people not help you out when that man turned violent, and then to have them witness your defense? I did look over my shoulder a few times to make sure the crowd wasn't following me with torches or anything. <laughs> and were they? No. Not a single person came after me. Not even to see if you were okay? Nope. Terrible. Well, I feel fairly confident in saying that if any one of us had been there, we'd have checked in with you. In a shot. I would not have hesitated. Me neither. I'm sorry that happened to you, Lori. Though I will say I'm glad that it brought you here to join us, and your experiences bring me right back to my own first encounter with the defense. Same. Yep. yep. You are in a terrifying and beautiful moment that one day you'll look back on with an odd kind of fondness. Beautiful? To me. Okay. And I suppose that anything's possible, but I don't think you're a witch. <laughs> <laughs> you just have the defense, like all of us. I think I'd kind of like to be a witch. You know, I've always thought I'd like that, too. It's never too late. You could be a witch with the defense if witches existed. I know you guys are joking, but can we not get into witchcraft? <laughs> look, look, what I'm saying is the defense is its own thing. It's not magic. It's just a skill we have. A skill? Well, more like an ability, an innate ability. It's an ability. I mean, <laughs> again, I'm not a witch. I know nothing of witchcraft. But from my pop culture, film, and TV knowledge, I'm pretty sure you have to work at it to make it work. Like, 
even if you're born a witch, you still need a book to learn it from. Mm -hmm. There's no book for the defense. You have it. You don't need to practice it. It will be there when you need it. So I don't need to come here to make it work. You don't need to come here at all. But of course, you are very welcome. We're here to support each other. That's it. Because sometimes having an innate ability like this can be difficult to deal with. Understatement of the year. <laughs> Is it already this early in the season? <laughs> You're right. There could be many more to come. Something to look forward to. Is there a prize or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet, but this group belongs to its members. So if someone were to take it into her head to award an actual prize to the understatement of the year, she could do that. Seems like a lot of trouble. <laughs> I might start making a list. You and your list. Uh, we all have our talents. List making is one of my best. Along with the defense. Would we call that a talent? I, I, I wouldn't. What would you call it? A curse. A curse? Really? I think so. That's why I don't mess with witches. <laughs> but it's a curse that has saved your life, has it not? Sure. Do you think Lori's defense is a curse? No. So why would yours be? Well, it might be a curse for that guy she smogged. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, that's fair. But is it possible he deserved it? Yeah, he totally deserved it. But that doesn't mean it's not a curse to him. But not a curse for Lori. Maybe it's a curse from Lori. I'm sorry, Lori. I shouldn't be so weird on your first day with us. We're supposed to help you today. And no, it's okay, Bria. I told you all my story and none of you called me crazy, so I've already gotten everything I need. Okay, good. I am sorry, though. I don't know why I'm being so weird today. It's okay to feel weird, Bria. Of course, we all want to be as helpful to Lori as possible, and I'm pretty sure we're all... Glad that she's here. Very. Yep. Of course. But thinking about first phases of discovering the defense can be triggering for a lot of people. It's definitely taking me back to my first experience. Mm -hmm. Me too. I got these flashes of just looking down at my first pile of ash and wondering where that man went. Mm -hmm. And why did he leave his corncob pipe behind? <laughs> he had a corncob pipe? Was he old? No. Just pretentious. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Pretentious enough to bring out your defense, <laughs> that is extra pretentious. It wasn't the pretension that was the problem. First ones are usually the worst. Yeah. I thought my first few were interventions from God. I mean, I prayed for help and suddenly my attacker fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. I thought it was God's work. Who's to say it isn't? My pastor, <laughs> for one. No, and he knows all of God's intentions, does he? I thought so then. And now? Now, I'm not so sure. Yeah, well, he's human. True. And humans aren't always their best around things they don't understand. That must be why so many people are weird around us. Mm -hmm. Yep. And hopefully we can be less and less weird to each other the more we understand what we're dealing with. It really is such a relief to be around people who understand. Did you try and talk about it with anyone? No. No, I just searched for it like it was symptoms of a disease. <laughs> I was all in on the medical sites before I found you. What did you think you had? <laughs> Some kind of reality disturbing disorder? <laughs> Shrinky manny? <laughs> Jerk smallification syndrome? Itty bitty shitty man maker? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, miss, but the doctor thinks you have an active case of seeing small men, sometimes <laughs> called Gulliver syndrome. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't go to the doctor. It is, actually, because there is nothing wrong with you. Really? Really. You did nothing wrong. You were just trying to go to an event at a library in peace and a dangerous creep got in your way. You did what you had to do. And you didn't even get to go to the event. I know, right? I was looking forward to it too. I know that feeling. Which one? Where you were on your way somewhere and you get derailed either by the attacker or the feelings after. <laughs> Getting harassed is such a time waster. Is that why they do it? I don't think so. I don't either really. Would anyone like to offer any additional words of support to Lori before we wrap up? Just, I guess, I know when I first discovered my defense, I was scared out of my mind and I felt so guilty. And I guess I would say, call one of us the next time it happens. You think there's gonna be a next time? Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I should not have said that. I should have said, it, it happens again. Is there no way to control it? 
To stop it? Sure. Stop getting threatened and your defense won't have to defend you. Mari. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what Mari is pointing to, Lori, is that your new skill is a direct result of a major challenge to your defense system. The man with the bottle activated a dormant power in you. Can't I unactivate it? None of us have managed it, and quite a few have tried. But uh, well, a broken bottle is a very big threat, of course. Maybe this will have been a one-off. Fact chance. Mari? What? I said one chance. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lori, I didn't like it either when my particular defense kicked in. And in the beginning, it was toggled pretty sensitively. I mean, it wouldn't take much to set me off once it was unleashed. But I've been working on it, and now I find that just recognizing that I have the power to turn someone into a pile of ash means that I don't have to do it. What do you mean? I mean, some guy's a dick to me. He could be a threat or just a dick. I don't know. In the beginning, I just ash him before I knew what I was doing. Now, I have a second to think. I could ash that guy. <laughs> And nine times out of 10, he just walks away at that point. I don't know if it's a look in my eye or a vibe he gets or something, but somehow he knows and he goes. It worked that way for me too. Awesome me. It is a fairly common experience. So you can learn to control it. To a point. I mean, I won't lie to you. Most of us are still here in the group because we have not achieved the control we would like to have. <laughs> it's a journey, but we have each other's support and it does help. I see. Good, I guess. I don't know. Does it wear off? Mm. Does it what wear off? The effects. Like, do the ash piles come back together? <laughs> okay, I guess what I'm really asking is, is the guy I made doll-sized going to get big again? And will he come after me? If he does, just small him again till he learns. And no, my ash piles stay ash piles, but... I suppose some folks have effects that wear off. Anyone here? Nope. Nope. Not me. Yeah. Most likely that small angry man is going to be a small angry man forever. Sorry. But you don't know for sure. No. I don't know which one I'd prefer. I'd feel really guilty if he were doll sized forever. But also if he came back, he'd be really dangerous and really mad. Maybe he should have thought that before he threatened you. Yeah, yeah, with the broken bottle, no less. Honestly, he's lucky to be alive, even if he is small. If he'd have tried that with any of us, I don't think there is a chance he'd still be breathing. Big pile of ash, my friends. Very big pile of ash he'd be. I feel better. Good. I'm just not sure what I should do. Enjoy your life. Go have brunch with your friends tomorrow. <laughs> Right. You got some brunch friends? I did. They all moved away. Well, you'll go have brunch with mine then. They don't know about my skills, so you'll have to keep that quiet. But I'll tell them you just join my women's group and we'll drink Bloody Marys and eat Evos Rancheros. Sounds amazing. Thank you. You bet. And the rest of you have a standing invitation, too, you know. If you don't have brunch friends of your own, I got you. I have some brunch friends, but it would be fun to put us all together sometimes. The more, the merrier. Bloody Marys aren't always the answer, <laughs> but when they are, they're an excellent answer. <laughs> and you're welcome too, Casey. <laughs> Thank you, maybe next time. I'm going apple picking with my girlfriend tomorrow, so I'll be deep in an orchard inhaling fruit. Mm. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it should be nice, yes. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything they want to discuss before we conclude? Anything you're going to wish you said once you get home tonight? Just thank you, everyone. I think I'll sleep tonight for the first time since this happened, so thank you. Of course. It's what we're here for. Literally. <laughs> this <laughs> seems like a nice note to end on. Quick affirmation? You'll pick it up. I'm, I'm safe. safe. But I'm not safe for everyone. Thanks, everyone. The Defense is a production of Messenger Theater Company. It is performed by Marcella Adams as Layla, Amber Jesse as Mari, Cosmic Kitty as Bria. 
Kristen Vaughn as Casey, and Tony Watterson as Lori. The writer-director is Emily Rainbow Davis. Sound design by Matt Powell. Sound engineering by Daniel Massey. Sound assistance by Angela Santillo. Stage management by Ella Lieberman. The producer is Melvin Yen. The defense theme is by Scott Ethier. I'm Jackie Jim. I'm safe, but I'm not safe for everyone. <laughs>